Hi everyone, this is Achyut Baba from Nightlight Astrology. It's Tuesday, April 7th, and today we are going to take a look at the full moon in Libra. So this full moon, which I'm going to show you on the screen right now, is brought to you by Venus. Uh, the moon in Libra is in Venus's sign, which means that this full moon will um, highlight or emphasize themes of peace, balance, harmony, equality, justice, also proportionality and fairness, as well as anything pleasant or romantic or sensual, um, Venus is the host of the full moon. So that's nice because uh, at the same time right now, we also have a huge amount of Mars energy in the air. And remember, every full moon is always caught up in the tension with whatever sign and house uh, the, the sun is in and whatever its planetary host is doing. So in this case, the peaceful... Um, and harmonious moon in Libra is opposed to the exalted sun in Aries, which is the sign of Mars, god of war. What is Mars doing? Well, currently Mars is squaring Uranus, uh, and that's perfecting as the full moon is perfecting. So that's a really interesting dynamic because on the surface, it looks like a very peaceful, fluid, harmonious Venusian full moon. Nice, right? Everyone should like that. But under the surface, we can see that this is a very polarized full moon because that, that moon in Libra is trying to create balance or harmony while God of War Mars is hitting Lord of Revolution, Defiance, and Rebellion Uranus in this really intense square, and the sun pulls in the opposite direction, exalted in Mars's sign. Maybe one of the silver linings of this moment is that Venus, the ruler of the full moon in Libra, is in a trine with uh, Mars right now by whole sign. It's almost by degree in a trine, but it doesn't actually perfect before Venus eventually turns retrograde next month. And then Venus is also configured by a whole sign sextile to the sun. So that's good news because essentially what we're saying is that uh, Venus and Mars have some harmony right now. Um, it, we need that really truly because um, the Mars Uranus dynamic is so individualistic and much more intense and action oriented and aggressive and assertive. And so we don't want, you know, the, the full moon in Libra is a, a weird energy to mix in with a, like with a Mars Uranus square. So here are some of the possible combinations we could see right now that would be potentially really difficult and then maybe some that are a lot better or easier. On the difficult side of things, you see trying to establish peace, harmony, or some you know, pleasant um, vibe, uh, some, some kind of pleasantness, um, despite there being a tendency right now towards you know, uh, aggression, defiance, rebelliousness, and some, maybe some degree of, of recklessness or um, intense individuality. So the moon in that sense is going to say, look, can't we just have a little peace? Can't we get along? Can't we find a happy, you know, like a happy meeting place? And the moon is going to keep um, pushing that agenda the rest of today and into tomorrow, um, while at the same time, you know, Mars has just got its foot on the gas pedal. So, you know, that could be really difficult. We could feel that as like, I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm trying to maintain peace, but I do you know, I, I might tip over into, um, you know, being overly aggressive or getting into, you know, more, more like combative situations with people. So watch for that push and pull. And that would probably be the most difficult element of this um, particular uh, transit. Now, on the other side, um, the most positive thing that could happen right now would be um, breakthroughs in relationships or some kind of effort or action that is designed to harmonize different agendas or different pieces or parts into a whole. So where Mars, Uranus, and the sun in Aries are very individualistic and have a plan and they're, they're very heroic, you know, Moon and Libra might say, hey, let's, let's take this heroic effort and join it with this other one. Or how about your needs, actions, demands, and will, how about we harmonize it with this one over here? And then greater collaboration and union is possible. And that would be like the, the bright side of this would be the ability to sort of mobilize one's activities and resources and energy with other people in order for, for everyone to feel happy.
So, and again, go back to the dark side. The dark side is I'd like peace, but God, everyone is tilting into selfishness or aggressiveness or combativeness. And uh, that might be felt really intensely right now. Um, Okay. Now I did an I Ching reading today that I thought was really interesting that I want to share with you guys. Um, The I Ching is an ancient Chinese oracle. It's really beautiful. Um, I often throw it at the full moon, new moon, some transits. If I'm, you know, generating thoughts and ideas for content, I'll throw the I Ching and see what insight the I Ching has to offer um, in addition to whatever notes I'm drawing up for the day. So um, this particular I Ching reading I did for the full moon because I thought, wow, this is a really interesting full moon. You've got, again, just to refresh, a peaceful, loving, Venusian, Libran sort of full moon vibe. Uh, but you have Mars, uh, the sun is in Aries exalted with Mars, its ruler in a square with Uranus, which feels completely, it's like completely polar opposite. So I'm, I'm going, okay, like what, you know, what else could this mean? First hexagram that came back in the reading I did from the I Ching is number 38, which is sometimes called estrangement. And the little, I'll just read you a piece of one of the commentaries, which says fire distance, it's Fire distances itself from its nemesis, the lake. No matter how large or diverse the group, the superior person remains uniquely himself. Small accomplishments are possible. Situation analysis, I like this. You are working at cross purposes with another. The distance between you is very wide. The gap can be closed, however, with no compromise of your integrity. You are not adversaries in this case, just two persons addressing individual needs. Ask yourself, are these needs mutually exclusive? Is there a common ground here? Must there be one winner and one loser? Could you become partners in seeking a solution that would allow for two winners? Bam, I was like, that's perfect. That is, that couldn't have asked for a more perfect hexagram to address the situation. But then the beautiful thing is the changing line, which is the sixth line of the hexagram. It reads this, isolated through opposition, one sees one's companion as a pig covered with dirt as a wagon full of devils. First, one draws a bow against him. Then one lays the bow aside. He is not a robber. He will woo at the right time. As one goes, rain falls, then good fortune comes. So listen to this commentary. This is one, I actually, I've gotten this line a number of times before, and it, I'll tell you what it always applies to, how it applies to me personally, but let me read you this first. Here the isolation is due to misunderstanding. It is brought about not by ex by outer circumstances, but by inner conditions. A man misjudges his best friends, taking them to be as unclean as a dirty pig and as dangerous as a wagon full of devils. He adopts an attitude of defense, but in the end, realizing his mistake, he lays aside the bow, perceiving that the other is approaching with the best intentions for the purpose of close union. Thus, the tension is relieved. The union resolves the tension just as falling rain relieves the sultriness preceding a thunderstorm. All goes well for just when opposition reaches its climax, it changes over to its antithesis. Isn't that nice? Whenever I've gotten that particular line, it usually works out like this. Whatever you are opposing right now is way more of a friend for you than you think it is. Whatever you are opposed to or opposing right now um, try to accept because it's better for you than you think it is. Whatever way in which I'm being really individualistic and feeling polarized with someone or something, when I get that line, it's um, a simple way of saying you've misjudged the situation or you're being too selfish. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, as they say. <clears throat> so that's my that's my been my experience with that particular line, um, and. Uh, now, it changes over into the um, uh, hexagram 54, which is called the Marrying Maiden. And it, um, it, it, I would just summarize the Marrying Maiden hexagram as a way of saying, um, don't struggle for a power, power, position, rank, authority that is uh, not your own, um, that is not your place. Um, don't, don't, don't strive to take something that isn't yours. Be patient. Um, you may not feel like you're in the best situation or like something is completely ideal, but if you push too hard and struggle for power, um, it won't end well. That's the gist of how I typically experience the marrying maiden. So uh, with all of that in mind, 
Um, I think that one of the overall ways in which I would summarize this full moon is there may be conflicting wills and a lot of, you know, um, individualities of the peacock feathers um, splayed out right now because of Mars Uranus and because of the sun in, in Aries. However, this moon in Libra and Venus in a, in a pretty nice harmonious trine with Mars, if we are reflective, discerning, and hold back from our most reactive or destructive tendencies, some kind of harmony is possible right now. And um, it may, again, like one of the things that I love about the hexagram that it said, I'll just reread that one part. <clears throat> it said, you know, you are not adversaries, just two persons addressing individual needs. Ask yourself, are these needs mutually exclusive? Is there common ground here? So that's what I'm looking at for this particular full moon. I would love to hear from you and hear how you are experiencing the full moon, especially with Mars and Uranus in the background. Um, in the meantime, uh, you know, leave your comments in the comment section. Tell me how you're doing overall. My prayers go out yesterday. We had someone share that her father had recently passed. Um, also people sharing that loved ones have uh, gotten COVID-19 or that they themselves have gotten it. So, you know, we're all let's let's all encourage and support each other um i hope that you're doing well and taking care of yourself uh prayers for safety of mind and and um safety of heart may all those who are suffering right now or who are afraid feel comfort and may we comfort one another um and be the the instruments of of mercy and compassion for one another right now um, so uh, that uh, prayer in mind, I hope you have a very um, wonderful full moon uh, and that um, you stay safe and, and happy. All right. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.